In this special edition of Low Bug Garage, I make some precision adjustments. I do some high quality repairs. Just need to find some bailing wire. A bit of light cleaning. The knife wasn't cutting it. I had to go to more power. And then this happens. Now I need to move this truck. I'd love to get it running, and it did run when parked. But that was 20 plus years ago. My dad said it knocked really bad. So the motor was bad then, it didn't get any better. So I'm not even gonna bother trying to get this started right now. I'm just gonna get it out of here. I'm gonna move a few things here. Why is metal so heavy? Now I was just thinking, I only have to move the stuff behind it if I go backwards. If I go sideways, this side's pretty clear. Let's try that. Let's take a look at the inside of this truck. Hey, the door works. We have air filter, which means the air filter is not on the engine, so that's not a good thing. The cab does have some extra ventilation in the floors, but really not that bad for the age and location. That can actually did worse than the cab did. These have got to be dump bed controls, emergency brake. On the two levers on the dump, I bet one of them engages the PTO drive. The other one actually does the dumping for the, with the hydraulic cylinder. So that's my guess. Oh, that handbrake's frozen on. That will make things much more fun. Shift lever doesn't seem to actually move anymore. Clutch pedal kind of works. Brake pedal kind of doesn't. Gas pedals stuck solid. Oh, hey. Releasing the clutch, release the transmission, which means probably the transmission and clutch work. Just the brake and gas don't. So we got half the controls working. It's got uh, some number of miles on it, probably. Don't know what that knob's for. It might be windshield wipers. Headlight switch still moves. Ventilation does not move. There's the little ventilation door. Here you can see the door and screen. That little lever inside would pop this open. You get fresh air right in, which is nice. 16,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating. It's an old state of Connecticut vehicle. And they said the light weight is 6,800, gross weight 10,000 pounds more. So they're calling it a five ton truck. It's a Chevrolet 6,400, and that's a big number. So it's gotta be about right with five ton. Certified horsepower engine. I only have two different engines available. We either have 105 horsepower if we have the 235, or 123 if we have the 261. Let's see which engine it has. Let's see what we got under the hood here. Oh, the hood stays up on its own. A little bit of extra ventilation for the radiator there. That's nice, in case that grill isn't big enough. Yep, air filter is off the carburetor. That is not good. I don't have much hope for that engine at this point. 
I can already tell there's a later model stove bolt because it's held down with bolts on the side, not the ones straight in the valve cover. This is a modern 50s engine. Looks like most everything is there. Let's see if we can find the block numbers. Well, there's the head number. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's see if we can read those block numbers. The knife wasn't cutting it. I had to go to more power. I can see those pretty good now. Here's the number behind the starter. This is the casting date code. The L means December, then 22 is the 22nd, and 3 means 1953. So this was cast on December 22nd, 1953. Hopefully I can read that once I see it on a full-size screen. And it looks like this T54 indicates it was machined in 1954. And that's the head number. The head was used on 235s in 1954. So it looks like we have a 1954 235. Good news is, those years they had the full pressure lubrication, so that's the better version of the Stove Bolt 6. If it's not completely seized inside, in which case it's a better version of scrap metal. That is one real hefty ground strap from the engine to the uh, frame. Looks like there's a lot of original stuff here. It doesn't look like this was hacked too badly. This has potential. It might be worth doing something with that motor and try to keep this thing kind of original. This one has the optional oil filter. I might snag that. I could use that in the mutt truck. See a big vacuum line coming off the manifold. Get the sticks out of here. See a big vacuum line coming off the manifold. So this thing has a hydrovac system under there somewhere. Let's go take a peek. Now you can see the hydrovac unit. And there is the PTO drive through a long shaft with a carrier bearing, then more shaft, and then the actual hydraulic pump part. There's a better view of the hydraulic pump. That is sure a long drive shaft to get to it. I like the exhaust, that's nice. On the cab levers, we have one of them with a rod going back that would control the pump. And then the other one has a rod going forward to the PTO drive. So the one on the passenger side engages a PTO, the one on the driver's side actually does the dumping. I like this bushing. That's just a nut welded to the frame that the rod passes through. Here's a better view of our little hydrovac unit. It appears there's a shackle holding the cab on. So it looks like this cab actually flexes, not just with rubber, but this thing can actually pivot and the cab can move a lot relative to the frame. That's a neat idea. The running boards have a nice protective layer of moss on them. So that should be good for preserving it. On the passenger side here, we've got the battery box. We even have the lid to the battery box. And there's the latching mechanism. So you rotate this and it sticks those spring-loaded prongs out. Looks like it's some kind of tar gasket, too. Yeah, I bet if I lube that up, I can get it to rotate. It's kind of interesting, on this front wheel, there's five lug nuts, but ten holes on the rim. In the back, there's ten lug nuts. So the front and the rear have a different number of bolts, but the rims will still fit because all the holes are there. I'm going to put this air filter back on. The damage has probably already been done, but no sense in making it any worse.
I ran into a problem, literally. Got a little too close to that tree. It hit the dump bed that stacked on the dump bed. Hmm, interesting. That seems precarious, but we're clear of the tree. Probably should move it to the center a little bit. Then again, the next tree I hit on this side might just center it up. So, uh, let's move forward while we can. Ran into another problem. Not quite as literally this time yet. Uh, the truck started sliding off the road here. It seems to be going to go downhill. I don't know why. This time, gravity works, unlike when I tried to use a dump truck. Pretty soon, I'm about to hit that tree there, so I need to move this rear end over. But it's more complicated than that. When I shot off this truck to figure out what to do, I heard hissing from the back here. The casting that used to mount this has sheared completely off and that line is busted. This one up here also is sheared and is flopping around and probably will break soon. So right now the brakes are locked on on this truck and I can't move it anyway. So I've got two problems to take care of. We'll start with getting this truck going first. Actually, I'm gonna go have lunch. We'll start with lunch first. Then I'll figure out what to do here. That seems like a better order. Got a new ferrule. Let's see if we can just shorten up that airline and make it work again. Uh, I'm gonna cut off the old end. The nut, I made sure to keep the nut on there. Now, this is a generic parts store ferrule. It's not exactly the same shape as the old one, but I hope it's close enough to work. And the insert in line there. We button it all back together. Why isn't it buttoning right back together? Actually getting it aligned helped. Now it's going on easy. That's what it was supposed to do in the first place. A little bit of bailing wire to hold everything up and I should be good. Just need to find some bailing wire. I'm sure there's already some in this truck somewhere. I found some old wire in the area where the taillights would have been if it had any. So that'll work fine. You can tie a wire in a knot, it'll work perfect. Just do a few loops on this thing just to make sure it's extra secure. You know, for safety purposes. There, almost like factory. Let's see how it works. The air pressure is building up. We've got air. Got to get back to what I was supposed to be doing in the first place. I fixed the whole tree clearance issue in a different video that you may have already seen. I just gently nudged the rear end over. We're totally clear now, so we can keep going ahead. For some reason, the rear tires aren't pulling anymore. I only have front wheel drive. And front wheel drive can't pull anything. Let's figure this one out now. I never actually tried this lever. I had a bungee cord on it holding it in place, but that seems to have come off. I do have this plate, which says direct, neutral, low, and then low with an arrow written in that I have no idea what that means. This whole range doesn't seem to do anything at all. 
Right about here, it feels like it does something. We'll give it a shot, see what happens. I hope there's nothing wrong with that transfer case. That is one huge unit. I can only imagine what that costs to fix. As soon as I tried to move forward, it popped right out of gear. Okay, learned a few things. That lever, when I move it back, it tries to go into gear but won't go all the way. You might have heard it grinding a little bit, but basically I couldn't move it back far enough to engage. Feels like it's just a sloppy linkage thing. There's probably bushings missing down there. There's probably a reason it was bungee corded forward. So uh, it looks like that's the position I'm gonna leave it in for now until I fix the linkage. But I had another thought. I was looking at the tracks here and it definitely looked like those rear tires were pulling some. Now this thing was set to be a plow truck and they drive on paved roads. It could be that transfer case has a center differential that allows the front and rear to go different speeds. So basically the differential is allowing the front to spin, but some of the torque's going to the rear wheels, just not enough to spin them. Another thing that makes me think about this is something I saw on the other side. There appears to be an actuator on this transfer case. I'm wondering if that is a differential lock and it's supposed to actually connect the front and rear in low traction situations like we have now. Just found this. Interaxle differential locked. It does have a center differential. The good thing about that is it means the transfer case is probably okay. It's doing what it's supposed to. So I'm going to see if I can figure out how I'm supposed to lock this differential now that I know it has one. Now this has been staring me in the face the whole time apparently. There's a huge lever and valve system for a interaxle differential. So this is a lever that locks the differential that I should have known was there. What makes this particularly bad is last year when I first got this truck running, I actually commented on that and said it would be handy. Differential locks. Oh, that could be handy. And then, since I didn't need it, I forgot all about it. So what we have here is we have a differential lock position, a neutral position, and differential unlock position. We got air pressure so I can try this. It's kind of doing things. I hear air leaks. I got it in the lock position and there's the dashboard light and it's not coming on. So I don't know if this works. We're just gonna leave it in the lock position and see what happens. That did not work, so I tried a different method. Momentum. And to get it moving again, I'm on drier ground, so I'm just gonna keep towing and see what happens. That's perfect. That's just where I wanted that truck. That's another win. I gotta start keeping score someday. Oops. I seem to have lost the dump bed. Uh, I'm gonna have to deal with that in a little bit here. Now all I have to do is get that truck through that road.
Well, that's it. Got the truck exactly where I wanted it. I wanted to put it in an out of the way spot where it was kind of hidden, but I could still get to the engine and work on it a little bit. It's perfect right here. That's it for this episode. I am just having way too much fun doing this stuff. I hope you guys are having fun too. We'll see you next time. A little bit of pruning, I can even get to the driver's side door.